Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG. Today on HOA Ham, we're going to talk about the Diamond BB7 vertical antenna. Its construction, performance, and use case is this antenna for you. I've owned it coming up on three years. I've used it frequently backyard portable in the HOA, as well as on beach POTA activations. It's a premium quality constructed 250 watt, six section collapsible, 22 foot, no radial vertical, 10 through 80 meter antenna. It hangs on some hooks on my garage wall and is there ready for me to deploy it in less than five minutes, usually two to three minutes, anytime I need to operate. Let's get a look at it. And here's the BB-7 hanging out on the garage wall, just waiting for an opportunity to be deployed. The BB-7 comes with this matching unit. It is a no radial antenna. And because it's a no radial antenna, I've added this choke at the bottom to reduce feedback into the shack. I keep 25 feet of coax permanently attached to it so I can quickly deploy out in the backyard. On the workbench, I'm doing a quick comparison between the lower section of the BB-7 and two antennas that we're all familiar with, the MFJ-1979 and the Chameleon Antenna SS-17, just so you can see a comparison of size. And then we move up to the tip of the antenna. You can see the BB-7 size of the top section compared first to the MFJ-1979 and then to the Chameleon antenna SS-17 in the top of the picture. And next up is that heavy duty flagpole that I've talked about. Overall length of it is about uh, 30 inches, I believe, and about 24 of that can get in the ground, way more than enough to keep this BB-7 up in the air. We're gonna operate backyard portable with the BB-7 this afternoon. I normally use this heavy duty uh, flagpole ground stake. The backyard's soft enough, I can normally push this into ground by hand. If I take this parks on the air to the beach, I take a mallet with me, because believe it or not, I can't push it into the sand. Let me show you how easy it is to get this antenna up in the air. Each of the sections of the antenna, when you pull it up, you twist it and it sits back down in a notch. And that's what keeps it from collapsing down on itself. And we'll have this thing up in less than five minutes, easily. Twenty-one feet in the air in less than a minute. Not bad. Let's get into our utility box and get the BB-7 connected to feed line three. I'll be able to go back and forth between feed line three and feed line four if I think there's any benefit to that. Feed line four is my reference antenna, a 73-foot N-fed wire. Obviously, it's two completely different antennas, a sloping wire and a vertical. They do have a different radiation pattern, but if we wanna see what the reference antenna sounds like, we, we can play that game as well. And that assumes that I have some people out there that are willing to let me go back and forth between multiple antennas. Either way, we'll get the BB-7 tested. All right, we're installed in feed line three, and now we can use our switch in the shack to go back and forth between the two. You'll need a tuner with this broadband antenna. On 3.5 megahertz, I had an SWR of 1.1 to 1. At 28.914 megahertz, I had an SWR of 2.46. On 20 meters where I operate single sideband voice most frequently, I had an SWR of 2.09 to 1. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. You are five and nine into Tampa, Florida, friend. Thank you, Victor 47, Foxtrot, Whiskey, X-Ray. one David, x -ray. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. 34, Bravo, Mike, Golf, nice to meet you, 59, Bob. 5, 9, Tampa, Florida. Thanks, Roger, good luck, sure, 5, 1, David, X-Ray. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf, no traffic for the net, just testing a new radio antenna, over. Sounds good. I've got Bob in uh, Palm Harbor. Is that cor correct? Over. 
Roger, Roger. Just checking out a new BB-7 21-foot vertical. Thanks, friend. Appreciate it. All right, sounds good. You're making it out. The uh, bands aren't exactly optimal at the moment, um, but uh, you are making it up here to Minnesota today. Over. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Okay, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, uh, Golf. Go ahead. Yeah, you're 5'9 here at the Tampa, Florida. How are you this evening? Thank you both for 5'9 in uh, Tampa. Same as Laura. Riman for United Radio Ocean. Located in northern Italy, okay? Roger that, Laura. Good to speak with you, friend. 73. I barely got these few contacts in, and a storm began brewing here in the middle of August in Tampa Bay, Florida. Typical. So here's my ring camera capturing me quickly pulling down this antenna for safety reasons. Since the Tampa weather doesn't want to cooperate, I'm going to roll in a few minutes of video from a recent POTA activation at a nearby park. You'll see the BB-7 just rocks it and easily and quickly draws in the contacts. CQ POTA, CQ POTA, this is Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf calling CQ from K1880, QRZ. Alpha Julia, 5 Charlie. 5 Charlie again. Alpha Julia, 5 Charlie. Alpha Julia 5 Charlie 5 9 into Tampa Bay, Florida, sitting on the beach. QSL? Yep, QSL, enjoy that beach. You got 5 9 here in Arkansas where we're expecting six inches of snow. <laughs> well, better you than me. Come on down and join me. It's, uh, it's about 63 degrees. I'm in short sleeves, uh, about 50 yards uh, from the waterfront here. QSL? Yeah, QSL sounds good. We're 53. Uh, 73, good luck for your activation. Thanks, friend. Appreciate it. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf, QRZ. <laughs> November 5, Hotel Oscar Golf, your 5-7 into Tampa, Florida. Hey, Roger, I have you a 5-7 Southwest Ruffle Bow. Great, thanks for the mark, Tampa. Thanks for helping me activate. 7-3, friend, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf at K1880, QRZ. November 9, Tampa Delta Lima, park to park. Park to park, November 9, Papa Delta Lima. I have you 5-9 in Tampa Bay from K1880. Copy the 5-9 into K-1880. I've got you 5-3-53 here in Kentucky. Park Kilo 1-2-6-0. Kilo 12-60, over. Kilo 12-60, QSL. Got you. Thanks, friend, for the park to park. 73. 73, good luck on your activation. Yeah. Thanks for that. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo. Mike Golf, QRZ. Park to park. Park to park. You're booming, man. Are you just on the other end of this shoreline? I may very well be. I'm over in uh, Honeywood Island State Park, Kilo 1880. <laughs> well, I'm I'm a Kilo 1880. I'm uh, over at the uh, the pavilion number three. I'm 25 yards away from the waterfront setup here in the sand. So yeah, we're in the same park. Now that I've had about three years to use the BB-7 and I already have quite the arsenal of antennas, would I buy this again today? The answer is absolutely yes. If you're looking to erect an antenna in your backyard or on your property permanently, you might find a better option. That's not necessarily the strength of the BB-7, although you can do it. I've compared this to antennas of similar price, construction, quality, and capability, and I think the best value and reason to have the BB-7 is its ease of use, how quickly you can set up and operate, and you can tell from the way that I've constructed my ground stake and I've added the two foot of galvanized pipe, I can go up quickly, I can get this thing operating in less than a minute, and I can take it down in less than a minute. So that's quite the feature. I hang it on my garage wall, when I'm ready to operate, I just go do it. So if that's what you're interested in, if that's what you need, you live in a homeowner's association, you need to be able to get the antenna up quickly and take it down quickly, this might be the option for you. If you like going vertical when you do POTA activation, again, this is a great option. I hope you found this useful and you got a little bit more information about the BB-7 than you've had previously. Talk to you soon, friend, 73.